Yay Networks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Talk Kim podcast. Actually, it's the Lo and Kim show. Sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, real good. Uh. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Y'all, I am, I'm so thankful that you're joining us today. Um, I thoroughly enjoy having this sweet man on uh, my podcast every time he joins us. Uh, but listen, before we get started, because we've got a, a power packed show, um, I want you to go to wherever you're watching this from, whether it's Spotify, uh, Apple, uh, Android, um, it could be iHeartRadio, my YouTube channel, Real Talk Kim YouTube channel, and subscribe and also share this. So this is what I need you to do. Go share, go subscribe, and also leave a good comment about what you got out of this podcast. Y'all listen, today we're going to get into it. We're going to get into business. Um, Y'all know that we've been dating for uh, uh, over a year, over a year now, um, and we're engaged. Um, It's crazy. I got so much to talk to you about. So we're going to fill them in. So y'all go get your pens and papers, uh, share this, subscribe, and get ready because we're going to get into love talk and business, all things relationships. All right, go, 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 go. Use a restroom, do what you got to do, and then come right back. See you in a second. Everybody and welcome back, y'all. Look at this handsome, gorgeous, hunk of hover, hover, hover of a man that I get to do life with. Thank you for coming back on the show. Oh man, you can keep going. I, mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you like me loving on you. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, Yo, I want to tell you something. This relationship, <laughs> I was ready for you, number one. But this relationship, I literally never dreamed in a million years that I could love somebody the way I love you. I never dreamed in a million years that um, that love was supposed to feel this great. And I never in a million years thought I would match someone. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you always match. Man, I'm telling you. You walked in today for the podcast and you had on this suit and tie and I lost it. You are so fine. But that. you know I went and put on pink. Yeah, I see. You know, the, pink, <laughs> the pink print with the suit, you know. It sells. I, I went and put on pink. It sells. Hey, how has, been, how has it been the last year with me? Come on, tell the people. Oh, it's been all up. All up. I mean, yeah, it's been all up. Everything's up. We're up right now. So, yeah. <laughs> You're at we're each other's peace. Yes. Everything's been good. So, I, we were talking about this podcast and what we wanted to talk about. And one of the good things that you brought into my life is your wisdom. You're a wise man. Um, you read all your emails. It's the funniest thing ever that you will go through all your emails and read them. And then my scripture is Amos 913. What is it? It won't be long. Oh, now God's degree. So things are about to happen so fast. Your head is about to spin. Bless it, I'm Bless it. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> and it's funny because you are you always getting these checks in the mail. I'm getting checks in the mail. I know it. And it's because you read your emails. Yeah, because I read my emails. Uh huh. Yeah. So so we're going to talk about business today. Right. And uh, these people that are out here that are wanting to start their own companies, uh, we both feel like you need to have several sources of income. Oh yes. And so if you are struggling in your life financially, uh, start today. Do something that is exciting to you. So you worked for Mercedes. I worked for, um, actually been in the automotive business for over 20 something years. Uh, And when I came to Atlanta, um, when I was in Florida, I was still in the automotive business with uh, BMW. when I was with uh, Mercedes uh, before COVID, yeah, yeah, but um, always been a a salesperson, always been finding a way how to make my own money regardless. Yeah, 
because basically when you work for you work for whether you work for IBM or whether you're working for Mercedes, I work for the customer. I'm employed for the dealership, but I work for the customer. So I always knew that if you can serve the customer, that's what's most important. Because if you don't have, it doesn't matter if you own your own business, but when people say I own my own business, well, really, well, who business is it? Because if you don't have no one to buy from you, it's, it's not your own business. Man. It's, it's the people. You got to be in the people business. So I always say I'm in the people business. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key. My daddy used to always say that, that, I mean, if people ain't following you, you ain't no leader. Right. Right. You got to be likable. And that's the one thing about you is you're so likable. You're so, you still have friends that reach out to you from, man, when you were back in the dealership days and you right. just became great friends with them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you taught me since we've been together is you taught me about Experian app. Downloading the Experian app. And and I'm going to be honest. Whenever <laughs> we first started dating, I was like, I need a man that's got good credit. Right. Because if a man ain't got good credit at in their 50s, what are you even doing? I know you walk through divorce and stuff like that, but bad credit means you don't really have good cre character. Right. Because... Nowadays, everybody works with you. And uh, one day we were at dinner or something and you were checking, you you check your Experian report every day. Yeah, I mean, you got, <laughs> when, when you got an app or, you know, that's the reason why you have these apps or this credit calmer or, you know, you got your credit uh, frozen that way. Yeah. When you have good credit, I mean, you don't want someone to, you know, start, you know, uh, getting your identity and stuff. They're over here shopping, buying certain things and you don't even know. That someone's buying something in your name or, you know, or stealing your identity. Yeah. yeah. So what you, what you did for me is you downloaded the app, the Experian app for me, and then you froze all of my scoring so nobody could steal my social security. Yeah, I froze uh, or uh, froze your your experience, Equifax and TransUnion. So this is all three, all three credit bureaus. So, and then you even went on there, and I had like eighteen res uh, residents. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I moved a lot. My I'm fifty one. Yeah, you kind of moved around and everything. When you apply for a house, or cars, or credit card, you still had all your previous addresses. You had like twenty five <laughs> different addresses. And and though I had lived there, I wasn't living there now. So right. you allowed you disputed it. I just, I had it removed. Uh, I had those removed. And a lot of times, the reason why is because, you know, lenders think that before they think about giving you something, they're like, we don't know how to find her. She got like 15 addresses. Ah. So a lot of times you want to remove those old addresses. You're not there. You only, if you have address that you live at, some people have a Florida address that they live there still in a Georgia residence or whatever, but remove those old addresses because a lot of time when lenders get ready to lend you money, mm -hmm. they pretty much kind of, you know. They look at all that. Yeah. So y'all need to go download the Experian app and start working for yourself, getting stuff off your credit. Uh, didn't you say something about even when someone does a bankruptcy, uh, you can fight that, right? Well, I mean, it's sometimes, you know, bankruptcy now lasts for um, – 10 years, you know? So sometime when you're in a bankruptcy, um, you know, whether you went through your courts, which is just called like a 401 court, and you went through that bankruptcy, and but when lenders start giving you, um, you know, able to buy again, whether you're still buying a car, well, you're trying to buy a car, after two years, everyone start looking at you, start getting credit cards and all as well. So whether you're buying a house again, so that bankruptcy doesn't mean that I'm just I can't buy anything. I have to wait the ten years, mm -hmm. you know. And even and even if you have to give your car back or something like that, you have to talk to the trustees if you need transportation. And the trustees go to the court and say, "Well, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith uh, need a car just to get to work, and they have to get their kids to school." So now they give you a permission to saying that they can go shop for a car in a budget. Oh, wow. But uh, 10 years, you don't have to wait. You can still go ahead and still reestablish yourself. Reestablish yourself in two years, 
um could uh, the lenders want to keep you at a certain payment they're not going to just jump you out there in a fifteen hundred dollar payment but yeah reestablish yourself so that way you're able to still buy homes still buy cars and stuff and you kind of like you know whatever they don't have a they don't have a, dis a dispute department to try to take off that bankruptcy ah yeah so whenever you was already charged off it's charged off yeah but still don't worry about um disputing the bankruptcy go ahead and still live your life and start getting you some new credit and reestablish yourself yeah so that's the best way that's the best thing to do because a lot of time people still uh even know that you will file bankruptcy you will still have a credit score what lenders look at a lot of time we don't know what happened to the person why they had to file bankruptcy yeah uh you know you know just things that happen you know bad things, life bad, bad things happen to what good people yeah so you still may have a 600 credit score. Well, guess what? Mercedes, BMW, Lexus, Ford, Toyota, 600 credit score can still buy you yeah. and finance a car. Oh, wow. With a 600 credit score. Wow. And it may be a little bit less than that. It depends on your occupation. It depends on your income. So lenders look at all that. They don't look at just the bad things because when you when you file that bankruptcy, they look at the last four years that how do you did how you did pay your bills before? Uh huh. Yeah. And before you fell on hard times. Yeah, you fell okay. Hard so time. now yeah. a lot of people ask us questions, baby, uh, with our relationship. How right. are we uh, merging our life? Right. I mean, right. you're merging our lives. Uh, I'm a businesswoman. You're a businessman. Right. Uh, how are we co-mingling? Uh, how are we bringing this? And we get asked all the time about prenup. Right. We get asked all the time about, would I bring you on my payroll? <laughs> I mean, we literally get the craziest questions because we've got so many women out here. I mean, in Atlanta, it's like 60% more women own houses than men. Like, right. So, um and let's answer some of those questions well, about us co-mingling, like uh, not co-mingling, uh, bringing our lives together. Right, right, right. Because uh, we talk about this. Yeah, we talk about it. You know, people ask you questions about putting me on the payroll. Well, the church don't have enough to pay me, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> but we really did have to talk yeah, about this because yeah. people wanted to know, right, like, yeah. how are you coming into Kim's life and uh, how are you handling her status as as i'm a boss well i mean everyone still don't have all the questions in life you bring in you know when someone get in your life you know let them let them do the things that what they're good at you know if we good at a certain things and you good at a certain thing then let that person stand out you know and we totally do yeah, that we stand we kind of you know we kind of stand out i mean if i want to if i want to take the car and get service so, uh, you know, they just say, okay, you take your, most women take their car to get service. Ma'am, uh, you need a, a, a upper arm active control also. And it's going to be $4,000. It's going to be 4000 and also the, the ceramic brakes and stuff, yeah. these disc brakes. This is a 14-inch And we disc. have no idea, so we this, just let them. This is a 15-inch disc turns and stuff, and these cars have to stop on the dime. And the centimeters is only three <laughs> meters of this is per, and prohibit. <laughs> that's so, that's Chinese, it. Chinese. Yeah. And you just looking like this. Yeah. I just need your permission. But you're good. Mrs. Jones. You do all of this. Yes. Yes. So how much money I just save you? Yeah. Because basically you just say, well, just put some, because I know, just put some brake pads on there. If it's brake pads, it's only 300 bucks. That's what I really loved about you, though, yeah. because you have come in and you, you, you most, just. Yeah. Most guys do notice. This is. They do? Yeah. Most guys do notice. Well, if, not if, the ones I was married if, to. If, if the, <laughs> If the guys don't know that, <laughs> then they they, they, they probably grow up their I, own way. I like, actually don't you know. think I let them. Right. I really think that I was the problem right. in the other relationships because I was a control freak. Right. And that's why a lot of women that are, are, are here killing it, making millions of dollars in their loan is because we want to literally be like part of a, a business owners with our partners instead of letting them come in and carry the role in the relationship. Right. And so I didn't let other men do what I'm letting you do. Right. But I, you also came I, in with a great heart into right, my life. Right. How many times you pump your gas since we since None. We so women, those are just simple things. When someone can get into your, when someone getting into your life, 
get into the simple things first. We don't need to get to all. I don't need to get all in your business. Get to the simple things in life, you know. But I've watched over time how slowly I just began to turn more stuff over to you. Right. Like, I mean, you, you, you really lead. We're not even at the fullest potential of what we're going to become. Right. And you lead so well with right. so much respect. Like you're so honored. Right. So, and most guys and, you know, that, like I say, it's a simple thing before you start diving into someone financial life so when you're in someone finance that's kind of hard to, for someone to kind of just say we've been together for a year let's let me look at your finance or let me look at this well she got 18 credit cards <laughs> <laughs> she got 18 credit cards uh-huh so what, what, what you know what, what you, as a guy you would kind of oh gosh i probably kind of move away a little bit you're kind of scared but for me i would say well let's see if we can consolidate let's get you I do not have 18 credit yeah, cards. Yeah, let's just say. Let's <laughs> In fact, say, I have zero. Yeah. I have an American Express. Right. Yeah. Me and you both. But most people out here, they live in off credit card. This is Atlanta. We see a lot of things. What we, we, we buy with our eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we buy this Louis. We buy with our eyes. We don't think we just yeah. boom, charge. Neither one of us do that. We're no. both very frugal. Oh, yeah. But, y'all, it is very important that when you begin a relationship – that you go into that relationship with an open heart. If you can't trust a man with your life, how can you be married to him? If you don't trust to tell him things about your life, right. you got to tell him things. Tell him what you owe. You tell her what you owe. Y'all figure out how you're going to uh, come into this relationship and make it work. You play, if you don't like him playing video games now, he's not going to quit playing the video games when you get married. If you don't like how slow he is getting ready, he's not going to speed up once you get married. And so it's walking into these relationships with clear communication lines and then finding your place. What I discovered is that when you get the right person in your life, it's very easy to submit to one another. It's very easy to pick up your life and, and, and intertwine it. So allow the red flags to be the red flags and, and, and pump the brakes right. until y'all figure these things out. Right. But we've really not had any. No, I mean, dressing, we take, I take my time getting ready. Yeah. I always do. Cause it but took me a long yeah. time to get here. <laughs> <laughs> you are the cleanest person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I'm talking the cleanest right. and you're slow. You walk yeah. slow. I move. Slow. Methodically. That's not slow. That's <laughs> so different. slow. Yeah. Y'all, you know? yeah. he is slow. He's 6'5", and he's, he, he, you know, when you get in that gym, you work out like a boss, but you are slow. You Nothing is going to stress you out. Mm -mm. You don't let nothing. Chill as all get out. Nope. I'm going to come into church a certain way. I'm going to leave, come in. Okay, so y'all, we've learned how to literally, like, at church now, you go to all the services with me. We're a couple, you know, we're 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 uh, uh, as close as you can get to mm -hmm. husband and wife. And uh, you didn't like walking in with me. You didn't like dragging in with all the other people. And now you walk in, <laughs> you make your grand, <laughs> you make your grand entrance uh, by yourself. I just didn't want to walk in with all these ladies at the church with these big hats and stuff. You know, these ladies wear all these big hats. And but the, that, nobody <laughs> in our church wears hats. But what we, what I've discovered no. is no. I just let you be you and you let me be me. Yeah. And it's working. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, you know, Keon and, and Shawnee or nothing like that. I'm just doing my own thing. I am the first man. I'm like, look. <laughs> I'm going to walk in how I want to walk in. He's the first man. There ain't you no know, church rules. You know? uh, There's no church rules how you how this guy going to walk in. So if I'm coming to your church, I'm going to walk in a certain way and stuff. So hey, You're going to be you. I ain't raising my hand. You're not? Yeah, I'm going to walk right on in. Oh, what was, is that the way you do it in church? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that about you, though. Yeah. I love that we have, because, man, in my other relationships, yeah. I just, it had to be this way, and it had to be that way, and uh, we were always trying to change each other. Y'all, yeah. when you get in a relationship, remember what you fell in love with and yeah. and build on that. Yeah. yeah. Tell each other how fine they are. Yeah, you got to. 
after I get done preaching, he comes in that office and says, girl, you're my Kobe Bryant. You're my Michael Jordan. I love that. Yeah. Get somebody that's the wind in your sail. Yeah. How, how, how does it help you? Man. Yeah. I never, y'all, I never dreamed. I really never dreamed in a million years that the right relationship. So if y'all are in a relationship right now where it is tensed, uh, you're walking on eggshells, y'all are dating. Yeah. And you feel like you've lost the excitement in your relationship. Pay attention to that. Yeah. Because you're going to have to spend forever with this person, right? And so now with me and Angelo, we discuss before it gets bad. Like you and I'll discuss things that ails us. We were talking about yesterday how much each of us have grown in this relationship. Right. How you used to be a little bit of a... Oh, what? 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 <laughs> Uh, we went into Houston's one time and this woman uh, 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 yelled across the, the, the bar and you let her right back at her. And I wanted to crawl under that table. I mean, you know, you don't do that no more. Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't restaurant etiquette, you know, for <laughs> for someone to yell at a customer and saying, hey, you still want this spinach? Uh -huh. I'm like, I'm thought I'm like, where? I thought I'm in a road house or something. I don't, I didn't know I was at. I thought it was at somewhere else, you know. You know, continuously it, growing. Yeah. That's what we've done. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, I don't mind checking someone, just let them know and stuff how to, how I need to be treated. You know, I know how I need to be treated. If I need to tell you how I need to be treated, and I'm spending my money, I don't care if it's Houston. I don't care if it's Papa Do's. I don't care if it's chops. I know how I need to be treated, and I know that my dollar will be respected. I love that. That's how. I Here's do. another question that we got that we need to hit on. Somebody yeah. wanted to know how do you, um, you you have grown kids. I have grown kids. Right. How do you uh, continue uh, to get in a new relationship, even if the kids are giving you a hard time about the relationship? Oh, forget about those kids. No. <laughs> Forget about those kids. <laughs> Tell them to go get a life. <laughs> no, I they're saying that their their kids are having a hard time. So she's been dating this person for two years and the daughters are not having it. And so the kids are saying if she gets with this guy, that she's been with him for two years. Right. Will not meet him. The grown girls will not meet him. Oh, yeah. If she marries him, then they're going to take away the grandkids. What would you say to that person? Because both of us are, we've got grown kids. And these kids are in the same house? Nope. Oh, okay. They got their own life. They got their own life. So that's what I'm saying. What is, Stop yeah, I'm letting not. your kids keep you well, from so, finding happiness. So are we judging the guy, what he did or who he was with or you got other kids? So her or? husband died. Okay. And the kids can't see her with anybody else. Okay. Okay. But what's the real problem? What's the real problem? You think there's a bigger issue? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I mean, because, you know, you you know, their father passed. I mean, but should she just wait till her kids decide to get older? No. And the grandkids get older? Or is she going to get older? Because something, something, you know, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get older and... They're going to move on with their lives with and their you're going to be all by yourself. So if a guy is a good guy, why do we have a problem with him being a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Because tell me what's the reason that reason why you don't like this person. So you would say date him anyway. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Here's another question yeah. that we got. And your grandkids and, and yeah. stuff. Uh, they'll come around. They'll come around. Uh -huh. And, and I'm going to take them out of my wheel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I will do. He's from Duval. I'm going to take you out of my will. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know who's the daddy. Yeah. Okay. Now, another question we got, y'all. This, this is the conversations we have. Okay. So, another question we had was, this man says that he has kids with this woman, and this woman is so angry. She asked for the divorce, but after they got the divorce, she is now... Uh, polluting like don't want her kids she's always talking about her the the talking about him to his kids and he's paying child support doing everything he's supposed to do but she's making it very hard on him does he pull back from being in his kid's life because she is making it so hard and difficult for all of them right what would you tell him well first i'm a petition the court <laughs> 
I'm a, I'm gonna reduce my child support. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because she's been an easy, an easy. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, but, but, but no. I mean, first of all, I mean, if the kids have, if you have a relationship with his kids, keep your relationship with your kids, because basically, you know, women or whatever spouse, you know, whether you're a non-custodial parents, uh, you still want to be ugly after the divorce. Well, the, the divorce is. The, uh, the courts divorce you have nothing to do with the kids. They gave you a child, they gave you spouse support is for you to take care of the kids. And you're supposed to take care of the kids with the, with the child support, not for you to go out here and buying all these expensive things. So that's what it seemed like. Maybe she's not getting enough money. And maybe uh, she used to being able to control his time. You, you don't have neither one of those anymore. So when you got it, when you got a divorce, now you have to adapt that this guy, is he busy? He don't have time to pick the kids up sometime because he is working and he's paying you a significant amount of child support. And sometimes you need to deal with that. Because I didn't even know that if you don't keep up with your child support, you can't even go out of the country. Yes, if you, um, you know, they won't issue you a passport if you're probably over $2,500 wow. in, in the rearage. But it sounds like to me she need to get, find her somebody else. Yeah. Because he already moved on. Yeah, but what yeah. if she, I mean, th this guy said that she has moved on, but she still continues to make his life hell. Well, that's what she was doing when they was married. That's the reason why she got a divorce. You can't run someone, like you say, we divorce. Yeah. Like time out. Yeah. Time out. So really, I would say yeah. if you can, y'all sit down and have a conversation and just say, let's get all the bad blood out. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. You don't want anything bad to happen to me, but let's learn how to co-parent. I think sometimes we get so resentful at each other because of the actions that have taken place that we literally mess up our whole kid's life because we're yelling and screaming and angry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. On into even adulthood. Yeah. So have a conversation, right? Have a conversation and don't let what they're doing to you get into you. But those are those are things that, that we probably can't be able to solve because those are the reason why they got a divorce. And sooner or later, someone got tired of someone trying to dictate and run their life. As husband and wife, it's about partnership. And now you're still trying to dictate his life and you're not even together. Mm. And you're trying to use the kids mm. to ruin his life. Mm -hmm. So only thing I can get advised that person, just spend much as time you can, you know, with your kids and be in your kid's life. Yeah. You know? And don't talk about yeah. Don't talk about the parent. I mean, I've been in that situation. Don't, 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 yeah. don't, don't do what yeah. that other parent is doing. You be the kid's piece. Yeah. yeah. yeah You've been in that situation. Yeah. I've been in that situation. I mean, most men been through that, you know. But we have to overcome. The only way you're going to overcome is, is, you know, is speak to your kids and stuff and spend time with them. Because when they grow up, only thing they hear is what someone told them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bad to talk about. And man, for you parents that are, are really making your kids toxic against their parent, other parent, like you're really doing an injustice to that parent just because you are so angry. So learn to let it go. Right. So we got one more and then we're going to kick it off to break. Um, a lady sent an email and said that um, in their early parts of their marriage, she was very broken and she was very hard. And she now has found that in her healing, um, their their relationship is so strained. They don't even sleep together. The relationship is so strained because of the toxicity that the relationship was. But now she's found Jesus and she's not the same person that she used to be. Hmm. But she's having a hard time reconnecting with her husband now. Oh. Um, what would you tell her to keep doing? Say you were that man oh. and you were in a relationship with someone that talked nasty. You called you out a name. And now you're so far away from her. Y'all just hadn't got a divorce. Y'all oh, just cohabitating together. Right. Well, how would you tell her to continue doing what she's doing to try to get her husband's love back? And I Is it possible? Yeah, I think you say something. We don't, they don't even sleep together. No? Yeah. Well, we can't be in the same house and be married and don't sleep in the same bed. Yeah. So how you That's very important can, to a man, isn't it? Yeah, how can you get your life back with God and you can't get your life back in your house? <sighs> so you tell me. And and I'm the man that's still contributing, paying bills here. Yeah. 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 When we sleeping in what what side of bed you want. Yeah. 
That's one thing we've yeah. decided in yeah. our relationship that, man, we don't never go to sleep like that. Yeah, you can't. You can't. I mean, and I think a lot of times, you know, and, and people at this age of 40s and 50 and they married, they sleep in the other room. No, no it's not going to be the other room. The other room going to be the other your other house. <laughs> Because we're not going to waste each other time. Because when you do that at 50, guess what? How long it will last? Like we ain't slept in the same room since we was 50 years old. And like you I would years never, old. y'all. I'm going to hear that. A lot of times. Never like, let why? that happen. Why? You told me you was a good business person. You told me you was this entrepreneur. Uh, but you have all the effort in, in those things. You, you say you, you know, you, you good with the money. Yeah. Well, it started at home. Yeah. All that started at home. Nobody care about your career. So a woman can love a man, right? And love him into right. falling back in love with her. Right. You believe that? Yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can go back to some of the things that where you was at, you know. Whether that you, made y'all fall in love. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whether you, you know, put your phones down. Don't worry about the Google. Don't worry about the social media because they didn't have that back then. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't. You had to ask somebody what do you think about this girl here? You had to ask, what do you think about this guy? Yeah. You know, you had to find out somebody in the community or something I love like that. that. Well, y'all, we're about to take a break and we will be right back to close this thing down. It's been good. It's been good. I got another question for you when we come back. See you in a minute. All right. everybody and welcome back i am with my sweet angelo i love your name mm. well you call me like low angelo so i know it know. well i called you low for a long time because i didn't want anybody to know, to know your name i was so protective of you like this relationship for me was so different and i know what the world is like they are jealous haters some of them some of them just come at you uh i remember we were on a blog one time and we had some people on there saying ugly stuff and i was having a fit so i always just was real private with you but now it's kind of like like, um, like you them, got it like let them talk yeah <laughs> let them talk you know? I remember we got put on one of those blogs and I was like, Oof. you were like, why are you, what, 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 why is it bothering you? And I yeah. said, because I thought people liked me. You said, what'd you say? They don't love you. <laughs> they don't all love they, you. They don't, all, they don't all love you. But. That was so liberating to me yeah. because I realized I preach it, but it hurts when it happens to someone yeah. I love. Yeah. I don't care what they say about me most of the time. But nah, We don't worry about it. You know, I mean, most time, you know, when people, you know, people that got time to do all that, I mean, whether well, you're going to stop their job, to sit up there and tweet, you're going to stop you at AT&T or somewhere, or you got to stop to turn the fries off and stuff. Oh, let me go tweet them stuff or send this, send this subliminal message about Real Talk Kim. You better get your butt back on those fries and stuff because I want my fries to be... <laughs> I want my fries to be cold by the time I come through that drive through at McDonald's and stuff. So you can keep on talking about me while you at McDonald's. Because that's the mindset that people talking about somebody. Because rich people ain't got time for that. They don't. They're waking up there 3 o'clock in the morning. There ain't not one successful person I know that's a hater. Yeah, they're waking up 3 o'clock in the morning checking their email. Yeah. And their bank account. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's another <laughs> question. Someone said that they... Um, are dating, uh, they just started dating. Uh, they neither, that the, the, this woman has not been in a relationship in like six years. Oh. And she just got in a relationship. And the last person that was in her life, a man that was in her life, were very ugly to her kids, grown kids. Um, and now uh, this man's coming into her world. And the man already knows, the man and her already had this conversation. He already knows that they've had this bad blood with the last relationship she was in. What do you tell the man that is now going to come in as not necessarily he's their, their kids are grown. How would you tell this man to present himself to these kids so that the the family can merge peacefully? Well, Cuz you've done a great job with my sons. I mean it's all about respect, you know, and if someone coming into anybody relationship you're coming into first of all I'm, I'm coming into a relationship with you i'm not coming into 
I'm not marrying your mom, your kids, and none of that stuff. My kids, you know, my kids don't have to call you a uh, stepmom and all this little smart little stuff that people normally would do. First of all, the relationship is about you two. And and I think that people on the outside, whether it's your friend or family, need to respect your relationship. And and a lot of times the reason that family doesn't respect your relationship is because you bring them into the relationship. Yeah. Stop talking to your mom about your spouse. Right. Stop talking to your best friend about your spouse because you're going to get over being mad at him, and, but they're still going to hate him. And how, you know, how can someone tell you about a relationship when, first of all, they don't have any? Mm -mm. They don't have. And they don't have yours. Yeah. The mom, the, the mom and the mom is not even married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you came into to my kids lives. Did you feel any pushback from my sons at all when we first started dating? No, but we was already spending time together. So it didn't really, you know, I didn't really see anything, you know, like that. So I didn't even pay any attention because we were trying to get to know each other. Yeah. So when you're trying to know each other, how can I, why would I want to worry about someone else that I don't plan on knowing if it's going to work first, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I can give a rest. First <laughs> of all, if I don't, first of all, I have to know, first I got to know if I want to date you. Yeah. Yeah. You and know. we were very yeah. careful. I, I have to know that, I, I mean, my life is important too. Yeah. And I think the thing is, let people, let people get a chance to date each other, figure out if they like each other and stuff. Then you talk to your family about it. just because you, well, hold on. Well, obviously they're not living in Atlanta because people date a lot here. You know, one minute you dating and stuff. And you date one person, you you go to another person. So you're gonna tell your your family every time you date someone. No, I did not. So so like I say, we Atlanta is the number one dating place here. And even people, you know? baby, even people that would see me out in public, they were like, we knew that y'all were serious. Like he was the one for you when you put him out on social media. There was seven months we didn't even let nobody know, and we were spending almost every day together. Right. And right. so just be private. Right. We let people know what we want them to know. Yeah, yeah. And when you asked me to marry you, the one thing you said when you were down on that knee was you looked at my sons and you said, you're not getting a father to replace your father. You're getting a friend. Right. So go into these relationships yeah. with an open mind yeah. and stop trying to force everyone to love you right off the bat. Right. And just be you. Build a relationship with your person. Yeah. And don't let nobody else in your relationship. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I sure do love you. Yeah, this was quick. It was quick, wasn't it? It was quick. Yeah. It was quick. Y'all, we hope that you were blessed with this today. Um, we love you. Uh, yeah, don't let nothing hold you back. Not the divorce, not the bankruptcy. Not the color. Yeah. Yeah, don't let Fall nothing. in love. Yeah. Yeah. You going to come back on with me? Of course. I can't wait. Of course I will. So proud of you. Oh, thank you. Y'all, make sure right now you just text your, your person. Tell them how much you love them, how thankful you are for them. Because, baby, you may not have all the time you think you do. And you want to make sure that you give them their flowers while they're still here. We love you so much. Thank y'all for sharing this. Thank you so much for your comments underneath the post. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving us. And remember, go to realtalkkim.com. Get in my RTK Inner Circle, which is my community, or get in my masterminds. It is my first one-on-one -on -one coaching program. You do have to give me a year of your time. Uh, One-year commitment in the one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one coaching program. It's called Masterminds. You can go to realtalkkim.com and you can push the flyers on my website and it'll take you right to the links. All right. And make sure that if you're out there in the dating world, that you're getting a person yeah. that can come into your life and not be jealous of you. That'll push you to breakthroughs and not breakdowns because the one God has for you is going to accept all of you and love all of you. All right. We love you guys and we'll see you next time. Yay Networks.